Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing the second episode in the Things I Love About series. Today we're going to be talking about Delhi in India. Now Delhi is a super interesting city and it's got a very impressive metro network. I haven't actually talked about India on the channel at all, despite having quite a few subscribers from India. And I don't know why, I think it's just because I had so many other systems and countries to talk about, but India is super interesting with regards to metro systems and railway systems in general. Uh, for example, India is developing its own electrical multiple unit trains, some of which are pretty high speed. Uh, there's a high speed rail project going on in India uh, in partnership with Japan. Uh, there's various metro systems being constructed in India. And actually, as it turns out, some of our newest rolling stock and metro trains in Canada are actually being manufactured in India, which is pretty cool. Now, if you're wondering specifically what those trains that we're using are, it's the new Montreal Rim trains, which I was happy to go visit last November. Anyways, though, enough background, let's get into the video. If you're not already, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. We're restarting our Patreon Metro Map system, where when you support us on Patreon, you get to put a station on the Metro Map. And in addition to that, you also get early release videos. Of course, we understand if you can't support us on Patreon, but please do consider tossing us a follow on Instagram and Twitter, and liking and subscribing. So the first thing I should tell you about Delhi's metro system that makes it quite interesting in my opinion is how much of it runs elevated. Now, these trains that are operating across Delhi on various viaducts and guideways, they're not light metro trains like you see in Vancouver for example. These are full metro trains, similar to what you'd see in Toronto, if not actually larger. And of course they use overhead power, which is pretty cool as well. Now, despite being quite a young system and the fact that India is still a developing country, Delhi Metro is incredibly modern, actually. As it turns out, Delhi Metro has a smart card system, something which I will remind you New York still does not, uh, as well as using platform screen doors slash platform gates at various stations, which is very impressive. As it turns out, in Canada, we still don't have a metro system which uses platform screen doors. Yes, certain systems are under construction, but it's just really amazing to see India, which did not have a single metro system 20 years ago, already having metro systems that are more advanced than those you see across North America and parts of Europe. Now, as I mentioned, India didn't have any metro lines just 20 years ago. But, now in 2021, Delhi Metro already has 10 metro lines. And to add to that, the neighboring Noida and Gurugram metro systems add to that another two more additional metro lines. Along those lines, you have over 250 stations, and the Delhi metro system now carries around 5 million riders every single day, which is very much in the top tier of metro systems globally. And the system is still growing at incredible rates. There's already a new line under construction, with around 50 new stations being added, both between that new line and extensions of existing lines. The Delhi Metro also has a ton of mileage. The Delhi Metro is almost 400 kilometers in length than it will be once those planned extensions and the new line opens. And that's really impressive because when you look at systems like the Paris Metro or the Chicago L, which have been open for over 100 years each, neither has actually become that long. And it's not just Chicago and Paris. The Delhi Metro is also set to surpass the London Underground in length in the next few years, which I find pretty amazing given that London is known to be one of the greatest metro systems in the world. Another really interesting element of the Delhi Metro are these stations. The stations kind of act as community hubs, and they're not small, budget, or cheap. They're gigantic stations. As I mentioned before, many of them feature platform screen doors. The stations also include a lot of artwork, and one thing that I find very cool about the system, and something I'd like to see replicated in Canada, the US, Europe, and the rest of the world, is the environmentally friendly initiatives that have been incorporated into the stations. Things like solar power and rainwater harvesting. Now, of course, public transit is already really an environmentally friendly choice to take. But seeing things like this on the Delhi Metro kind of shows how we can take that environmentally friendly aspect of transit and just turbocharge it. So I have talked about a lot of general aspects of the Delhi Metro, and so now I want to get into the weeds a bit and talk about some of the technical features of the system that are really impressive to me as someone who is quite the transit nerd. So the first thing I want to talk about is rolling stock. So the Delhi Metro has one of the most interesting mixes of rolling stock from around the world. Now, of course, these metro trains also operate at higher than average speeds. They max out at 100 kilometers per hour, which seems to have inspired a lot of newer metro systems to adopt this higher speed standard as opposed to the more traditional 80 kilometer per hour speed limit. 
Now, as I mentioned, much of the Delhi Metro is elevated, which is part of why it's been able to expand so quickly. But the whole system is not elevated, and there's been innovations regarding tunnel boring techniques and underground construction, which Delhi has originated, that are quite interesting to me. In addition, something I found out about the system that was pretty interesting as a Vancouverite, who is quite proud of our extra-dosed bridge on the Canada Line, is that Delhi Metro also features an extra-dosed bridge, though it travels over a number of railway tracks. If you're wondering, uh, this might not help, but uh, an extra-dosed bridge is kind of a hybrid of a cable stayed and a box girder bridge. That might not mean anything to you as well, though. Maybe the last technical feat, and probably the one that is the most unique about the Delhi Metro, is the electrification system it uses. While I always am talking about how typically metro systems use DC power, and long distance and high speed rail systems use AC power, Delhi Metro originated the concept of using AC power, 25 kV AC, the standard as you probably would expect, on a metro system. Why did they choose 25 kV AC, you might ask? Well, that's because Delhi Metro determined the train should be able to travel fast, carry heavy loads, and navigate steep grades. This is important because Delhi Metro estimates some of its real rapid transit lines will need to carry as many as 60,000 people per direction per hour during peak times. To put that in perspective, London's Crossrail, a $20 billion mega project with massive trains, huge stations, and really events signaling, is going to get the same capacity as a typical Delhi Metro. That's something that really shocked me to see, and it just goes to show how impressive the capacity of the Delhi Metro system is. Now, with all the expertise that's been built up constructing the Delhi Metro, the DMRC, or Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, has developed to both operate the system and construct new lines. Similar to some of the most impressive metro operators around the world, like RATP, who operates the Paris Metro, and MTR, which operates the system in Hong Kong, DMRC is not just working on the Delhi Metro, but they're exporting their knowledge and expertise to other systems across India, and more recently, to other countries. This is a level of skill and refinement you don't see in most metro systems, and the fact that the Delhi Metro has been so successful at constructing its system has been why it's been able to go and consult to other systems around the world. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the second episode of Things I Love About. Delhi is super interesting, as is the whole of India, and I really do want to visit once COVID is over. Thanks for watching the video, I'll see you in the next one.